There was once a man, Henry, called the Lonesome Wolf. He went on two legs, wore clothes, and was a human being. But nevertheless, he was in reality a wolf. He had learned a good deal of all that people of a good intelligence can, and was a fairly clever fellow. What he has not learned was this, to find contentment in himself and his own life. The cause of this apparently was that at the bottom of his heart he knew all the time that he was, in reality, not a man, but a wolf. Are you expecting someone at 7 a.m.? Come in! Aunt Claudia, I told you to stop just telling strangers to come in the house. Excuse me, sir, what can we help you with? Ah, uh, it smells good in here. It smells of domestication. Of home. See, Harry? He likes my plants. I say, can we help you, sir? Yes, I've come about the room you have to rent. I don't think you're the tenant my aunt is looking for. Oh, shut up, Harry. Come, sit. Join us. Claudia. It is Claudia, correct? Oh yes, dear. But everyone calls me Aunt Claudia. My name is Henry Hess. I wish to rent your room from you. We'll pay rent six months in advance, obey any rules that you set, and be of no disturbance to you. Or to Harry. How does that sound to you? Oh dear, that sounds wonderful. Great Aunt Claudia. Just lovely. Who does that man think he is? Why would he say it smells good in here? Well, I know why. There's a smell of cleanliness and good order here, of comfort and respectability. And I think maybe he hasn't seen that as of late and maybe he misses it. Misses it? Or maybe he has filthy habits and he comes home drunk all hours of the night. 
We shall see. We shall see. <laughs> I feared for Aunt Claudia's home. I had come to see it as my own in the three months I had been there since my release from the hospital. My fears proved groundless. While the lodger did not live an ordinary nor rational life, he was no trouble to us. My aunt and I bothered ourselves a lot about him. The stranger who would call himself a wolf. He is still in our thoughts. And I must confess, I often dream of him at night. The mere existence of such a man has had a thoroughly disturbing and unnerving effect on me. steps for weeks to run across him or get into a conversation with him. But after finding a shaving blade with blood on it, my curiosity drove me to do a little spy work. Who was this Henry S. that came into my life? What was his life before he became the lonesome wolf he is today? He would decorate his walls with ripped pages and live as if he slept inside a history book. What would drive a man to surround himself with the past as he did? Henry's puzzling strangeness, his extraordinary loneliness, is still foreign to me, but I'm beginning to understand.
I've told you, I no longer tread in those vices. Ah, uh, yes. But how long have you tread upon my shadow? I wasn't following you. I was just on my way back to Aunt Claudia's. It's okay, Harry. At least you're brave enough to hunt the wolf with no horse. Now, if you were walking by as you say you were, I ask you, please. I have many thoughts to attend to. You attend to your thoughts in this back alley gutter? We're all in the gutter. Some of us are looking at the stars. That's Oscar Wilde. Very good. Very good. Very good. Everything of moderation. Now please, I have many matters up here to attend to. Good day. It is humorous how a tragedy, a tragedy can, become can become a gift. A gift. I lost everything, everything and never been more free. I remember the lonesome wolf once told me that those words, that idea, have stayed with me. Many things the lonesome wolf said and did have bounced around in my thoughts since he came into my life. This life we lead is nothing more than a seat from which to view a stage. A stage where strange people play strange parts. How strange a part Henry played in my life. Did he know his lonesome of character would impact me so? Did he not know his fangs would sink into my skin and never let me go? I would often walk in my aunt's house to find him sitting in odd places just staring into space, deep in the thoughts that trouble man and beast alike. Mr. Hess, are you okay? We do not like drunkenness in this house. Ah yes, this beautiful glass home you have for yourself, Harry. Tell me, Harry. Did your own drunkenness not plague this house once? I don't know how it comes about that a wolf as myself always ends up in these respectable, spotless, middle-class homes which smell of bleach and soap. Where there is panic if you bang the door or come in with dirty shoes. I doubt it is deliberate on my part. I like to breathe in the odor of this quiet comfort. In spite of my hatred for all it stands for, there is something that touches me. so attractive about this spot that lures you here. Why? I'm sitting here watching myself die, of course. Tip, 
talk, tick talk, tick talk, tick talk, tick talk, tick talk. <laughs> Eternity is a moment, one long enough for a laugh. <laughs> The nine months Henry was in my life consists of vignettes like this, coming across him in various states of inebriation. I would start a conversation with him in hopes to have him reveal who he was and where he came from. He never revealed these things, but somehow got me to reveal things about myself. His sly speech and Socratic method of debate would pull things out of me, things I had been hiding from my own mind. I only saw him as not a lonesome wolf once. It was when he was in the company of a young lady for the first and only time, I saw joy on his face, a vulnerability the wolf does not often show. I awoke one morning to a commotion that sounded like children playing. After this day, our guest altered very much in his behavior. His books went untouched, and I would not see him for days at a time. Who was this young woman that took his days, that would try to teach a wolf to dance? My curiosity of Henry was at a peak. The last interaction I had with the wolf was when, up to more of my espionage, I followed him to a small bar.
It would be here I would learn this mystery woman's name. Beatrice. Henry was waiting for me. He knew I had been following him. As I walked towards his table, he gestured for me to join him. I was trapped. Trapped by the wolf I hunted. And it would be this night that I surrendered to the wolf within me. And there she was, Beatrice, the beautiful young woman from days before. She walked out and smiled to Henry, then her gaze fell upon me. since your last incident. Six months of sobriety. Six months of happiness. the human wills fight against the transient nature of the universe. Henry's sickness of the soul, as I now know, is not the eccentricity of a single individual, but the sickness of the times themselves. A sickness, it seems, that by no means attacks the weak and worthless only, but rather precisely those who are strongest in spirit and richest in sorrow. to those whose fate it is to live the whole riddle of human destiny heightened to the pitch of a personal torture, a personal hell for mad men only. <laughs> 